for joining me today. I am joined by Ian, my friend and a business associate of mine as well. He is the Jim Wolf PT, so he runs his own personal training and coaching business. You'll see him on LinkedIn, he's really active, sharing amazing content about his clients and different bits of information around how he does things. So check him out on LinkedIn. For those of you that don't know who I am, my name's Cameron and I run a company called True Fitness and we help CEOs, business leaders to get incredible shape in six weeks. That's the elevator pitch for you. So today we have a chat with um, Ian, ask him a few questions around fitness and health and business because you know as a as a company, what we do, we have a lot of business people. So business and fitness kind of you know amalgamate. So the question is going to be around those two subjects. So let's get into it, then, my friend. So tell us a bit about you know your journey from what I know to be the corporate world to kind of where you are today. Yes. So thanks, Cam. Um, my background is probably very, quite different from a lot of. PTs and fitness professionals in that I didn't get into it straight away. Um, I've always been into fitness training and played a lot of sport in my younger years and you know, I've, I've gone to the gym 30 odd years <laughs> non-stop but my initial working life was I started with a, a, a company where I worked for 23 years, um, started at the bottom level, worked my way up, become the quality assurance manager for the entire company and then the production manager. And it was a good company. They backed me well. I've got a lot of qualifications that I don't probably use as much as I should now because I'm doing fitness, but I've, I've got black belts, awards, uh, six, six, six Sigma, um, lead audits. I've got a business degree, did knee bosh health and safety, and now I'm in fitness. Um, so I was coming up to 40, and there's a story really that really shows why, why I transitioned. I was in our weekly meeting that I used to have with the managing director and it was the same meeting every week. It was basically two outcomes. We either need to put more overtime on and bring new staff in or we need to get rid of staff. And it really hit home to me in that meeting but I'm coming up to 40. The plan had always been really just to stay at that company and work there till I retired and that's what everyone around me thought, the managing director and directors, they thought I was there for life. And it just wasn't, it just hit me there. This isn't appealing for me. This isn't what I want to do with my life. Um, and at the time, I had two kids, mortgage wife. I've got three kids now. Um, I couldn't just quit on the spot, although I li literally in that meeting, I was ready to, I was like, right. It was like the, the light with a star up in the sky. I'd seen it and I'm like, the eyes are open. I need to do something. But I couldn't straight away. So as a result, I went home that night spoke to my wife and I was just like, I need to change, but I need to do what something that will really motivate me, really, I can get into that I really want to do. And fitness just stood out. Fitness was like, it's my hobby. I play sports, I go to the gym, I love talking about fitness, I love reading about fitness, everything in my life. <laughs> Not everything, but a lot of things <laughs> fitness driven. So that really was the changing moment. But like I say, I had a mortgage, wife, kids, I couldn't just quit. So the following year was spent working full time for the company still, but setting up what turned out to be Jim Wolf PT on the side. Um, so I mean, I got my qualifications as a personal trainer. I did a lot of courses, did a lot of learning, got involved in social media, including changing my LinkedIn profile from being a, <laughs> a business one for the company yeah. to my own personal one spent a lot of time on there and it literally was about a year later to the exact month i'm not over to exact day but a year later i literally got to a point where i could say right i'm leaving this corporate world and jim wolf pt is is coming to life and the rest is sort of history i've been doing that now that we're back in 2017 um so i've been doing this now for six six years full time um and yeah yeah, I'm enjoying it, loving it, helping people, getting to meet great people like yourself, Cam. Um, spend a lot of time on LinkedIn and do a lot of things elsewhere. So yeah, it's how did that, how did that feel when you'd went from you know corporate to running your own thing? Lots of different feelings. So excitement, motivation, but also I'm not like fear. I mean, I, after 23 years, when every month I were getting a and it was a decent salary popping into my bank every single yeah. week, getting pension paid for. You can plan, right? You can plan your expenses and everything. I yeah. had uh, an annual bonus that were linked to the company's performance, and that you know, you, you, 
all good stuff that, that actually had kept me there for so long. I used to finish at dinner time on a Friday, have all my weekends free, nothing to ring. But over the weekends, I, I was always thinking, ah, oh, Monday's come here. I wasn't enjoying it. So, yeah. like I say, there was the excitement, motivation, but there was it was tainted with fear. Uh, it, was, yeah. it was a big step at, at my age with responsibilities, like say kids and a wife, it's not just, all oh, right, well, I'll, I'll just give it a go. And if it, yeah. There's a lot of stake, <laughs> right? Money then, yeah. yeah, I still had to pay the bills. I still had to do yeah. what I needed to do. And, and and hats off, man, from going from that world to the world you're now in is, you know, incredible. So, you know, it's it's great to see people do well for themselves. And also, you know, you see lots of people that get a job and stay there forever, even though they're not happy. They don't take that step. It's scary. And, you know, it was nearly me. <laughs> yeah, nearly. But well done, man. It's, it's amazing. It's an amazing story. So, you know, not talking specifically about the corporate world or specifically about your business now, what would be like the top two or three lessons that you've learned in business in general um so i'd say the main one is knowing you can't do everything yourself and literally like i said when i went full time on gym World pt i did believe that i could do everything <laughs> i believe that i was the accountant i was the social media guy i was the, obviously the coach i was the video guy i was everything and it has took me a long time and and to change from that but I do realize now you need to get help I've got a skill set in the sense of what I offer on the fitness I think I do relatively well on what I do on LinkedIn but there's so many things I don't know or I'm literally do them and I do them to a very low level so a big thing is now getting involved with people who do the things I'm not good at well um, so that's so that's a big one um, Scheduling time is an important one. It's like suddenly when you go from working a nine till five or whatever to having your own business, you think, wow, there's so much time. There's so much thing to do everything. But that can easily get taken up with minutiae and stuff that's not building the business. It's easy to like be a, a busy fool, really. And I've certainly was that at the beginning. I'm not saying I'm perfect now, but I was doing a lot of things and I look like I think, was that given any benefit to the company today? Or <laughs> no, I've, I've kept busy, but I'm literally not done anything that's took the company on. So scheduling out, really planning the day out is something I'm, I'm really working on now. I'm working with someone on that side and, and like my calendar is like really precise now. I'm not saying I don't, I don't sometimes deviate from that, but having that, Monday, this is what I'm doing today. Tuesday, Wednesday, but is important to me. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that, that's two things on the business. Let me just have a think about the third. Yeah, one. that's right. Um, I just had a quick question actually, because you know, on the um, the scheduling side of things, because I've got kids, you got kids, you know what it's like, right? There's sometimes kids don't like working to schedules or working to patterns of play, right? Yeah, this. You know, remember always back like back in the day when you could just turn up on a Monday to work and go, right, I've got all the time in the world, got no pressure, no stress, you've got kids out the door. Like for, for you, what did you do in those moments when, you know, the, the kids, for example, you know, one of your little ones gets sick, you have to pick them up from school. But what, how, how do you deal with that like from a scheduling point of view, but also mentally? Because for me, that really throws me out sometimes when I've got a less best laid plan, you know? Yeah, yeah, the kids is a big point. So I, I used to have a lock on this office door, but my wife <laughs> it off. so now it's, it's more like a playroom. I'll come back yeah. sometimes from wherever I've been and there's toys in here, but um, yeah, I, I tried to keep it out. But just knowing that sometimes business can wait is important. Yeah. Um, to me, family will always come first. Um, don't get me wrong, there's, there's occasions when got a busy layer lined up and like say kids kids are real and it just throws it out and at the time you, it, it can be quite stressful but I always just try and look and say the bigger picture that'll happen another day if it yeah. way to day or even a week it, it can still happen the kids yeah. being ill is something that's happening now and it needs to be dealt with, dealt with now yeah. Um, so yeah a, a big thing with being in business is balancing that with family yeah um, and again, it, 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 I'd still say I'm a work in progress in that where 
I have had the times where I've literally just said, right, I'm in my office, I'm going to take, stay in here till six, seven o'clock. And neglecting the kids sometimes, and I'm really actively trying to change that where I say, right, at this time, on this day, I finish, and then it's family time, and not yeah. deviate from that, because I, yeah. I mean, I've got pretty young kids. My oldest is 14, the youngest is five. Got an 11 year old time, uh, 11 year old boy. I won't get that time back. So getting that yeah. balance is, is very, very important to me. And I do feel lucky in the sense that my old corporate job, I used to work, like I say, it wasn't the nine till five, it was usually eight till five. I'd go to the gym before that. So I wasn't seeing my kids in the morning. My, my oldest son, I never used to take him to school. Whereas now I get to take my daughter to school every single morning, which yeah. is, is, is a privilege for me. Yeah. Because the thing is, you know, that, that like you said, you make a really good point there. You know, those times you can't get them back. And, you know, when they're grown up and they're all at school and they're doing their own thing, like, you know, in their secondary school, you've got time, more time than the business, right? So it's important. Yeah. I think you've got the balance really, really well. So, I mean, um, we're both lucky because we kind of work from home or work from local to yeah. home. So that, that's, I don't think you can underestimate how amazing it is. And I, I often catch myself and go, you're a lucky bastard. Like, don't, don't be too hard on yourself. You know, you're doing all right. So... Appreciate you sharing that, man. So, you know, just, just for you then, because obviously I know we're both in the fitness industry and uh, people often look at what we do and assume that we find it really easy and assume that because we're in the industry, you know, it just comes naturally and we're in the gym every 30 seconds, etc. cetera. Um, what, what is the biggest challenge for you, you know, getting in the gym, staying healthy, eating right? We've alluded to the kids and scheduling. But what's the biggest challenge for you, do you think? Um, it is time. There's no getting away from it. It's time. And people who do pro who follow me on LinkedIn might sometimes see me posting about my morning routine. And they might go, who's this guy going on about it again, getting up early? I, I do what works for me. And I'm not saying that will work for everyone. I get up extremely early. And don't get me wrong, <laughs> whatever people think, I don't wake up in the morning and go, wow, yes, I'm ready to do Well, you mean you don't really want to get up early, no? You don't really enjoy no, it? No, no. I, I have actually a, a, a little tactic to that where, and I've used this for nearly 20 years because that's when I, about 22 years ago, I started morning training after telling myself for years I wasn't a morning person. And the technique I use now is as soon as I wake up, I ask one simple question. I take my mind two and a half hours forward and I say, will you feel better if you get up now or stay in bed? And 99.9% .9 of the time, I always say I'll feel better if I get up now. Wow. And that's literally, it's, it's quite negative really. It's like I say, I'm not jumping for joy in the morning. I'm not, but that, that question, that one question gets me up. I mean, for 20 years. <laughs> it's popped up at ridiculously early times. Yeah. Like I say, I'm not, I know people have different schedules. I know sometimes it's not convenient. Some people get up early because of it, or they just don't want to. And that's absolutely fine. I think with fitness, it's important that people and coaches, when they're working with the likes of myself and yourself, work to what works for the person. And like I said, the reason that the morning work routine works for me is because I've got a lot of stuff on the end of the day. I've got to, yeah. I, I do the school run. I pick the kids up after I do things. So for me, like I say, I'm up at 5 a.m. I meditate, I do some visualization. I set out my plan for the later in the day. I've got a little bit of a checklist. I'm a bit <laughs> OCD on checklist. Yeah. And then I hit the gym. Then on six o'clock, I actually do my social media for LinkedIn. In a, and in a warm up period, I get on the bike and I'm right. Multitasking, <laughs> multitasking, yeah. And then at half past six, I'm onto my gym workout and then I do my cool down and then I have a quick sauna, sometimes a sauna and steam room, shower, and I'm back. And like I said, that works for me. And some mm -hmm. people are like, oh, that's boring. That's, that's, that's you mean, oh, he's in the 5 a.m. club and that. I don't see it like that. I, I see it as I've found something. That I've, my problem is time. I've got kids and family. This is what works for me. Yeah. For anyone, I think it's finding what works for them. And the other thing is, what works for them now might not be what works for them in six months. Yeah. Life changes, circumstances changes, family changes, everything changes. So don't 
have to say this is stuck in stone that you're gonna have to do this for life or six years, five years, whatever. No, if the following month something better works, implement that. Yeah. Um, so it's about changing. Um, yeah. I, think, I think I think something that's you know something that's come up in my brain that as you mentioned that I spoke about that. Um, I think this is an observation I make with people that I talk to all the time. Obviously, we talk to so us as a company generally speak to. CEOs, senior executives, business owners, kind of like senior people, right? And I think this is probably most people's outlook when on fitness and how things are. When they're in a position where they've never really done it before and they're not, you know, they've not kind of got fit, they've not lost weight, they've never really been in their goal weight, and maybe tried something and it's not worked for them. What I find is that people think that getting fit and losing weight is going to be, should be really, really fun. And I think they look at it and go, look on Instagram as people with ripped six packs and they're doing silly videos and they're like doing bicep core and they think that's the reality. Yeah, yeah. And the reality is just what you've just said. It's like, I've got kids, I'm really busy. I don't have the time to train in the day. So I'm, I've made it a priority. So I yeah. drag my ass up out of bed at five in the morning. Most days I assume. Yeah, yeah. Um, in Christmas, you know, when it's snowing, when it's raining, when it's hot, when it's doesn't matter, you do it, and you do it yeah. because you know it's what keeps you fit and healthy, right? That's yeah. not sexy. That is not exciting. You know, if you used to create a program called "Get Yourself Up Early, Drag Yourself Out of Bed," is really depressing. You ain't going to sell many programs, right? Yeah, sure. But that is the reality, and I think a lot of people they they look at what their journey is going to look like, and they think it's going to be easy it's going to be fun it's going to be really simple it's going to be the reality is there's going to have to be some kind of trade-off and so yeah yeah based on what you just said about you know the early mornings i would i in my experience i think most people would benefit from training first thing because it means that it's done they've done it ahead of the day and like you mentioned you made a really good point on how am i going to feel in two and a half hours time right if you get a workout in chances are the rest of your day you're going to make better choices so it's really, really, really powerful that what you just said. But I think it's um, it's testament to you the fact that you're doing it all the time, and you've got kids and staying fit and staying healthy. I think people could could learn a, a lesson from that. And I think we should make a clip out of the uh, two and a half hour quote. I think we've got yeah, to steal man. that one. <laughs> yeah, that's, that was amazing, man. <laughs> I like to say some people look for the positive in everything, and to me that is quite a negative thing. I literally look at it as like. You're gonna feel bad if you don't do this, but that's what pushes me or pulls me. And 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 it, yeah. again, it's about finding what works. But you, you are right. There is a lot of people on Instagram and like this celebrity thing of yes, we jump out of bed smiling. The the birds are tweeting. It's sunny every day. Mm. And we feel great, and that life's not like that. No. It's not to say that we can't make programs that are as best that they can for that person but there's no getting away from there's going to be some hard work however on the flip side that I, I i don't know about yourself but i get a lot of people who contact me and they often see the extreme side in what what they will have to give up and that so i'll have some people say to me oh, i'd love to do your program but i'm not i don't want to give up drink and i say well has anyone ever said you have to give up drinks for the program again it all depends on goals. If someone says, "Right, oh, I want to be up on stage in six weeks' time, rips, and I'm doing a competition," then yeah, they're probably going to have to give up alcohol and a lot of other yeah. things. But if someone says, "Look, I'm going on holiday in six, eight, ten weeks' time. I want to feel better, look better," that doesn't mean cutting out absolutely everything they want. It's yeah, about getting that balance. But yeah, you're right. You have to put some work out. You have to make some changes. Yeah, um, you've got to and. Those changes soon become the norm. It's that short term where people first make the change, and if they overthink about, oh, I'm not, I'm not able to do this. I'm having to give this up. I'm being punished. That's the that's the worrying side for people. Yeah. I think they're looking like they'll most likely fail if that's the way they're thinking. If they're too restrictive, it. right? Yeah, yeah. I hear you, man. I hear you. Um, okay, then just finally, because I was trying to keep these videos kind of like 20, 25 minutes ish because people might get bored listening to us. But um, just a final question, you know, just you know, quite a deep one to get yourself ready. Um, what would you like to be remembered for? What, what kind of legacy would you like to leave behind? Um, that is quite deep, isn't it? <laughs> Went from uh, waking up in the morning to deep. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I personally 
and a lot of people might think, oh, that's not important, that's not, it's all about the money and that. I do want to be rem remembered as a good guy who was making a difference, who was making a real difference in people's lives. And whether that's a few hundred people, thousands of people, or millions of people, I, I don't know yet. But I just want to be known as, it was a good guy. And, I, I, and I'll not be everyone's flavour, but a good guy who did the right things and he encouraged people to do the right things. If I'm remembered as that by people around who I'm connected on LinkedIn or wherever else, and obviously more importantly, my kids and my wife, then I'll, I'll be happy. I'll be happy. I think that's commendable, mate. I think people have got big, big, you know, big visions of grandeur and all these crazy things they've done, and it's like, well, what's really important? It's just the things you said, really. So, yeah, I appreciate that. I think you're doing a good job so far. So keep, keep yeah. going. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I, you know, you see the people with the Lamborghinis. And that. I'm not that good a driver. I know I'd pass you. <laughs> they wouldn't myself. ensure you, mate. They wouldn't ensure you. <laughs> it all has to be relevant to me. So yeah, it's uh, yeah. Brilliant. All right, then, mate. Well, look, thank, thank you for your time. Um, I'm just going to kind of uh, quickly run through because underneath this video today, I'm going to put a couple of comments. One will be um, a little bit about Ian and where you can check him out. So what, what, what's the website they can go to to check out? Uh, yeah, JimWolfPT.com. Um, cool. It's Jim as in G-Y-M. Some people think I'm called Jim. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, JimWolfPT.com is the website. Brilliant. So we'll put that link below so you guys can check that out. Also from my side, for True Fitness, we've got a, a free ebook which you can check out, which I'll put in the comments below. Um, it's essentially the way we do run our programs, the five pillars we run a program, helps you to get more productive, improve your health in five really simple steps. So I'll post those below. And um, thanks again, Ian, and we'll catch up very soon, mate. No, brilliant. Yeah, mate. Thank brilliant. you.